worship on this Christmas Eve with Christ Church of Fort Thomas, Kentucky. My name is Edward Good, and I welcome you wherever you might be. Our guiding statement as a congregation is that we embrace all as we journey the way of Jesus. And so on this Christmas Eve night, we welcome you, we embrace you, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey. Tonight, we will be walking through four steps of this season. As we have been doing throughout this season of Advent, we have been using a prayer form of await, allow, accept, and attend, based on the words and the wisdom of Julian of Norwich. And that will structure what we will share in our time together tonight. And so wherever you may be, Open yourself up to what God wants to share in you and share for you this holy night. Welcome to worship. And so we begin with a practice of awaiting, holding our hands here to our midsection, awaiting what God's going to do. And we begin that with words from the prophet Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you've increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born this day for us. A son given. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Just a few months ago, I was at a conference in uh, Columbus and I had one of those experiences where I'd fallen asleep, you know, we'd gone, I'd gone to bed, and I was staying at a friend's house. And it was an old house, and the bedroom that I was staying in was very narrow and very long. And because it was an old house, it had only one out- outlet in the entire room, and it was by the, front, by the door to the bedroom. And so my friends had warned me, you know, if you wake up in the middle of the night, I hope you have your phone next to you or something like that so you can find your way. Well, I'd forgotten to do that and my phone needed to charge. So it was over on the other side of the room. So I woke up about three o'clock in the morning, needed to go to the bathroom. But when I woke up, I kind of forgotten where I was. I knew I wasn't in my own bed, but it was that moment of kind of, you know, my brain hadn't caught up with my body waking up yet. So I kind of laid there in bed waiting to kind of get my, my, my mind where I was. But I got up and I kind of did that thing where you kind of, you know, kind of do that, those short little steps and you kind of reaching out in case something's out there, you know, for you. That's what I was doing. And I remember kicking a table and, you know, kind of the, ah, you know, that went along with that. And finally I got to the other side of the room, but it had taken a little while. And I got to the other side of the room and kind of felt around on the wall and finally found the light switch. And when I turned on the light, I'd forgotten how bright of bulbs they had in the overhead lamp that they had in the room. And it was like, ah! Just the, the brightness <laughs> that assaulted me as I woke, as, as the light came on. I was waiting in the darkness, and then I had to wait for a little while to kind of get my eyes adjusted to the light. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people who heard these words, who received these words initially were people who were waiting. They were waiting for protection. They were waiting for safety. They were waiting for hope. They were living in a time of what felt like trying to find their way in an unfamiliar and scary place. Maybe shuffling along, kind of like I was doing at three o'clock in the morning. And that waiting in that place, that's a hard place to be. 
Many of you may be in that place. A place where you are waiting for something to emerge, something to happen, something that you long for. You're waiting there with open hands. But even when it comes, even when it comes as I turned on that light switch, even that bright light takes some time, some waiting to get adjusted. The people who received this, when that time came, it was not in the way they were expecting. It didn't come as quickly as they wanted. When finally they returned from exile and came into their own nation once again. And then centuries later, when the word of a Messiah, a Savior was born, it was born not in the way that they expected or that they were ready for. But instead, a baby born in a stable. And so we await. We await. From Matthew, chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. Now the birth of Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they'd been together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save their peop his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son and named him Jesus. And then from Luke chapter 1, we read the story of Mary. In the sixth month, an angel Gabriel, named Gabriel, was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a young woman, to a virgin, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and her name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at his words and pondered what it might mean. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will be great. We will be called a son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? For I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Lord will come upon you, the Holy Spirit, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy, will be called the Son of God. And then Mary said to her, Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. And so we started with a waiting. But then the next part of prayer is allowing. It's reaching our arms up above our heads. And as I've shared a couple times with this part of the prayer practice, sometimes when I do this, I think of a, of, a, of a little child reaching up to a caregiver, to a parent, to a grandparent, waiting to be picked up, maybe to be carried somewhere, maybe just to be comforted, to be held. Those arms reaching up, and then that, that parent, that caregiver reaches down, maybe under the armpits and pulls that child up and holds them close. But I got to admit, there's another thing that comes to my mind when doing this, which is I got to be on my guard. Because in my house, there's this thing that happens sometimes called a pit viper. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. But let's say I'm reaching up to get something out of the top shelf in our kitchen cabinet. And as someone walks by, they might walk by and go, whoop, 
poking me right in the armpit, right? And there's that, ah, <laughs> right? That's called a pit viper in our house. And so this action of allowing is, is not only a sense of expectation, but it's also, it's an act of vulnerability. It's an act of, I am going to trust even though I'm exposed. Both Mary and Joseph have this experience. These stories that we heard of them are stories of allowing, of allowing God to take them and use them as God desires. And with both of them, God promises that God's going to take care of them. But there's got to be a little bit of vulnerability and fear for both of them. For Joseph, you know, he talks initially, it talks about how he was going to divorce her quietly. Joseph knew what was going to be said about her and about him and about them. But then the Lord intervenes with this new command and Joseph agrees to do it, knowing that there will be consequences, knowing what might be ahead. And for Mary, the same. Mary, trusting, yes, let it be to me according to your word. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Right? That's a beautiful statement of, yes, I'm going to trust what you're going to do, Lord. But she's vulnerable. She's exposed. And maybe that's why, right after this, we read how Mary went to go be with her sister, Elizabeth, who herself was having a miraculous gift of a pregnancy. Maybe not just to be together, but to go for a place of protection, away from the rumors and the whispers and all that would have been said about her. And so when we come to this point of prayer in in, in our faith lives and we lift our arms up and in, in allowing God to do God's work. Yes, it is an act of trust. Trusting that while we are exposed, while we are vulnerable, that God's got us. That God's got us, just as God did for Mary and for Joseph. We await and we allow. Remembering that it happened once, we cannot turn away the thought as we go out cold to our barns toward the long night's end, that we ourselves are living in the world it happened in when it first happened, that we ourselves, opening a stall, a latch thrown open countless times before, might find them breathing there. Foreknown, the child bedded in straw, the mother kneeling over him, the husband standing in belief he scarcely can believe, in light that lights them from no source we see, an April morning's light, the air around them joyful as a choir. We stand with one hand on the door looking into another world that is this world the pale daylight coming just as before, our chores to do, the cattle all awake, our own frozen breath hanging in front of us, and we are here as we have never been before, sighted as not before, our place holy, although we knew it not. As the Christ candle is now lit, our act of accepting, so we await, we allow, and we accept, is an affirmation of faith. Accepting what God has done and affirming our belief in it. And so we believe in God whose light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never smother it. We believe that on a night like this in Bethlehem, there was a born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. We believe in the Word who has become incarnate, our very flesh and blood, 
yet full of grace and truth. We believe in the blessed appearing of the salvation of our God that is for the happiness of all people. We believe in the Savior's name to be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Jesus. Of the increase of his rule and his unique peace, there will be no end. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. So we await, we allow, we accept, and now we attend as we hear the words from Luke chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered, and Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and lineage of David. And he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing good news of great joy to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem. And see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. And so they went, and they found Mary and Joseph, and they found the child, the child who was laying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Attending. Attending to the story. Attending to the work of God in our lives. That's what comes to me as we come to the conclusion of this time together. And I think of building a fire. Now, I have to tell you, in my family, I'm not the one who's usually asked to build a fire, whether it's in the fireplace or in our fire pit. I have this tendency to want to just kind of like put a bunch of wood, throw some lighter fluid on, and just throw in a match. But like my, my youngest, who's a scout, and my wife, who also was a Girl Scout growing up, they know how to really build a fire. You know, just getting the, the, the little bits of kindling and that tiny little, you know, get that spark and, and to nurture and attend that tiniest little fire, to blow on it just right to kind of keep it going but not blowing it out, to slowly attend to that to where it can slowly get bigger and bigger until it becomes the fire that you are hoping it to be. When I think of this final act of attending, that's what I think of. I think of nurturing. Nurturing that which God desires to grow in each one of us. I think of how in this Christmas story, God took what were seemingly insignificant people, Mary and Joseph, and bore the Christ child through them. I think of shepherds in the fields, these People who were forgotten generally, ignored by most of society as they did their work outside of town. And yet the story came to them. And that they were the first to go out and to tell and praise for what they had seen. They were the first to tell the story. 
And so these seemingly insignificant people in the grand scheme are the people from whom the story emerges and it grows. So that's my encouragement for you tonight. To allow God to fan the flame of God's love, God's truth, and God's hope in you. And it's not just simply waiting for something else to happen outside of you. It is something that we do ourselves and with others to fan that flame. And so just like these actions that we've talked about tonight of awaiting and allowing and accepting, attending calls us to action, to attend to the life of faith that God desires in you and for the love and the hope and the truth for us to share with others. And so we receive all of this story tonight. But may we be like the shepherds who hear this story and they go to share. Merry Christmas to you on this holy night. Grace and peace and love and joy be with you. Amen.
out of sight as their journey continued throughout the night. So while they were walking in such a long way, we'll think about something else happening in that day. For out on the hillside, way up high, some shepherds were washing their sheep by the rock.
Here you stand after the shepherds of Israel. The man was a king. What's peace with us? We need to They couldn't bring away the Lord's rest. The Lord already said it. It's the Father. It's terrible. So far in the east, and the wise men had seen, they scoured the sky and did it in the end. Joy to the world, the Lord. 